What's going on, everybody? It is your boy, Chris, man. We are here at the Work Hard, Play Harder podcast. It is December 6th, 2023. Um, wow, can't believe this year has went by as fast as it has. Uh, I got a special guest coming on today. Her name is Terry Simmons. Uh, She is a news anchor for KTBS. Uh, She's also a talk show host of Healthcare Line 3. Uh, She is somebody who has been, has experience in radio, has experience as an actor, writer, um, and somebody that didn't naturally get a degree in the journalism field. She actually uh, graduated with a psychology and business degree. So um, we're going to talk to her about her why. Uh, of why she transitioned. Uh, we're going to ask some fun questions and we're going to get to know her a little bit. So uh, without any further ado, I introduce to you the wonderful, talented, and beautiful Terry Simmons. Hi, Terry. How are we doing today? Uh Uh-oh, I can't hear you. There we go. You hear me? I hear you now. How you doing? I'm good. Gosh, I'm so sorry. I don't know why I locked it in my head. You did everything right. I just locked it in my head. It was seven for some reason. So totally fine. Totally fine. We're here now. You look look amazing, by the way. So do you. So do you. Thanks very much. It's nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. So let me give you a little bit of uh background before I start kind of, you know, peppering you with some questions. What I like to do on this, on these typical podcasts of mine, is I really like to get to know people and what they do as far as the background. I really like to know their stories. Uh, everybody has a story to tell. Uh, we all walk through different parts of life. Uh, the reason why I started this podcast is it's a great way to interact with people and have great conversations about things in the industry, uh, but also get to know you questions and fun questions that I like to throw in as well. So uh, when I saw that you are a news anchor, uh, if I'm not mistaken, at KTBS, um, and then you also do a talk show host, if I'm not mistaken, it's called Health Line 3. Mm-hmm, um, right. right. So you do that. So obviously, I'm a sports reporter here based out of Minnesota, uh, and I also broadcast um, sports games. So I love talking to anybody in the journalism field because it's pretty much all the same. The only thing that's different is our genres, right? Your news, yeah. um, sports, but it's all the same. We both have to have communicative type roles and we both go through things, right? And um, I love that. I love just being able to connect with people. So thank you so much for hopping on my podcast today. Oh, I'm thrilled to be here. Yeah, I love stories. I'm a story magnet. I love human stories. Um, ever since I was a little girl, I just, um, I love telling stories. I love hearing stories. You're right. Everybody's got a story and everybody's story is interesting. Everybody. Is. Yeah. I agree. I totally agree with that. Now, are you from Louisiana? I grew up in East Texas. I was born in Massachusetts just because my mom and dad happened to be there at the time, but my whole family is from East Texas, right across the border from Shreveport, Louisiana. So Northwest Louisiana, Northeast Texas, kind of all the same feel. So, yeah. Mm. I like that. Okay. Yeah. So now I, we're going to get into your, your college or university that you went to, which was Stephen F. Austin. So I'm yeah. gonna, I got a question for that. But <laughs> I want to know, how did you transition into journalism? Because if I'm not mistaken, from the research that I've been doing a little bit, you got a psychology and business degree. So how did you transition into uh, journalism? Well, it was a big, long road. I was actually, I've been an actor and a writer in Los Angeles and all around for over 20 years. And Mm. so live TV has been my jam, um, getting stories. Um, For about five years, I kind of lived out of my Jeep. I took the back seat out as soon as I got it and um, left my job, donated almost all my belongings. And I traveled around kind of just going by grace and just listening to people's stories and volunteering and taking short-term part-time jobs and just traveling around um, Mm. gathering stories and so when I came I came back to Louisiana from California my mom was ill and um, and so it was time for me to come here and help her um, cross over and so when I came here it was kind of coming back home and I couldn't find a job it's it's very small town there's not many jobs to do and if you're not Uh, in this industry or in this area, if you're not a nurse or in banking or something specific, it's really hard to find work. 
Um, sure. There are secretarial jobs, but they're few and far between because people stay forever once they get the job. So um, that's originally why I couldn't even stay here. Well, I left 30 years ago and took off to Denver, Colorado. Uh, that's where oh, wow. I went first. Yeah. But growing up in East Texas, just, you know, I, I just, I don't know. I have kind of a wandering spirit, I guess. But when I came back here, couldn't find a job. Uh, and okay. my son was like, their sales jobs. I was like, I am not a salesperson. I cannot sell, but I need really? to work. And, oh, no. And so, but I, <laughs> I, I can't stand the pressure and, uh, and working on commission freaked me out because I was here to support my mom. Um, right, we never, right. she didn't really have a lot. I didn't have a lot. I kind of spent everything I had coming back. And um, so, yeah, there I was. And so I found this job. Anyway, I ended up at KTBS channel three, which is the news station I grew up watching and mm. they hired me. But they saw on my uh, resume that I'd done a lot of camera work. And they were like, well, you know, are you comfortable from the camera? And I was like, I would be more comfortable right now if you put a camera in the room. That's how comfortable I am on a camera. Sure, and sure. so, yeah. And so it just kind of grew from there. And then before I knew it, they, um, well, that was like right before COVID hit, right before the lockdown. So I came okay. here in January, 2020, March, 2020. There I was sitting in this boardroom getting hired for sales on channel three. And then four days later, we were all sent home, not knowing what to do. As you know, a lot of people just, we didn't know what was going on. So sure. we got sent home to our individual houses, took our little computers home. No one knew how to even set ourselves up for that because no one worked remotely at this station. Um, right. And then the boss said, hey, I've been thinking about something. Would you mind coming back into the station? We're doing the spacing and no one's, everyone's in cubicles. You'd be in the studio by yourself. Uh, we're definitely distancing and washing everything down would you mind coming in and getting on the air? And they performed a service. We created a show called Local Live. And we gave basically free advertising where I would get on the air, did not know what I was doing, running the prompter where I'd remember from years before, um, right. got on there. And what we would do, is we would do Zoom just like we look right now. But back then, I mean, it's 2020, they weren't doing a lot of Zoom interviews, but we would line up like three to five guests and they got, each of them got two minutes where I would just say, tell me where you are. Are your doors open? Is it curbside? What can we do to get the word out? Uh, let us help you. And it was all free. It was free advertising, free touching base, which is what I do best. This kind of stuff. It was just like this. It was like, if it was the lockdown and I was calling you saying, you know, tell me about, you know, Chris, tell me what's going on. Are you okay? How's your family? Mm -hmm. um, okay. What are you offering? What are your services? Are you still cooking? Can we still drive up and get a meal? I would be, you know, so that's what we did. And then it kind of went from there. And then I ended up on on the news being a news anchor. And uh, and then they had a show. I love live interviews. I love talk show. That's mostly my jam is like being a talk show host, doing this kind of stuff, talking to people about their stories. Um, and we had, we developed a show called Healthline 3, where for 30 minutes, I would interview a doctor or another health professional and the viewers could call in and ask questions. And so that was great. I did that, you know, just about every day of the month. And that was, that. I just kind of fell into it. They just said, you know, would you do this? And we got shorthanded. And so the boss put me on the desk and I just thrived. I loved it. So I got and really you, lucky. You do a really, really good job. I did watch Thank the, you. you had two doctors on the, your last uh, episode that yeah. I saw. Um, and then I, I watched, there was another clip that I watched of you because when I like to interview people, uh, or talk to people, have conversations. I don't really like to say the word interview. Yeah, it's me either. It's a conversation. Um, so you did an Oprah audition that <laughs> that, that, <laughs> that was very funny. Uh, I, I was like, wow, okay, this you <laughs> definitely got to put this woman in front of the camera because she she's made to be in front of the camera, and you do a lot of shorts as well on YouTube, like yeah. you're. I think one of the shorts I saw you were talking about, you were outside in the sunset. You're going to yeah. take a pit. Yeah. So I was like, this woman is definitely, definitely, sorry, destined to be in front of the camera. You do such an amazing job. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah, I love it. I think it's it's my platform, no matter whether it's TV, film, um, talking to people. Yeah, it's just kind of, it, it finds me wherever I go somehow. So yeah, I love I you love too. It. You're destined too. You're amazing. And you're obviously very comfortable and really good and bring out the best in your guests too. And actually my first co-anchor on the desk was the news director, Alex Anderson, young guy. He's the news director. I mean, the sports director at um, KTBS channel three. So he's a sports director slash um, afternoon anchor. And he was my first co-anchor. So um, yeah. So hey. sports guys do it all. Yeah. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And he might be somebody in the future where we could probably have on this podcast. I would like, love I him. Like... He's incredibly dynamic. He's a wonderful guy. Yeah, best in the world. Yeah, best absolutely. partner I ever had. Yeah. Awesome. Now, 
I want to talk to you about any choices that you might have had outside of picking Stephen F. Austin University. Now, I could not. I tried, Terry, for the past 10 minutes before we came on here to pronounce the city. <laughs> I cannot pronounce the city, and, and, and I, I just can't. But uh, please tell me, were there any other schools that you were considering outside of uh, Stephen F. Austin? Well, it was really interesting. I grew up not knowing I could even go to college. I thought college was for everybody else. My dad was a Texas Aggie. We're all Texas Aggies. My aunt, my family, my son went to Texas A&M. My daughter-in-law, my grandson thinks that's the only school in the world and that's where he's going, which is fine with us. Um, right. My my dad, my ex-husband, I mean, everybody, I come from a whole family of Aggies and grew up in Aggie, 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 but I never thought, I never had the confidence to think I could go there. I don't know why. It wasn't locked into me that I could go to college. And honestly, I, I don't even, I still don't even know how I got into SFA. I don't remember. I remember, I think I just drove there and somehow convinced them that they accepted me. I guess I got a letter. I don't remember applying um, because I didn't know I could. Um, right. I was always helping everybody else. I didn't know scholarships were available to me. My mom just didn't talk to me about that. My mom was a single mother. I was kind of the the mom of the house. And um, she just, I don't know. It just wasn't, it was like it was for everybody else. And somehow I ended up going to SFA, driving away in my pickup truck. And they didn't even have a dorm room ready for me. I slept on the floor of a friend's dorm room who was graduated the year before me. And okay. we were cheerle- yeah, we were cheerleaders together. And I still don't know how this all worked. I'm kind of convinced that I just kind of showed up and went through and got an ID and somehow I'm supposed to be here. But um, it, worked it. It. <laughs> it worked out. It worked out. I yeah, love it. You got the go get a type of mentality. When you're sleeping on the floor, I love that. I love it. I did. That, group. <laughs> that is awesome. That is awesome. So yeah. let me ask you, you just said your family are all Texas Aggies, right? A&M. Yeah. Uh, how do you feel about Jimbo Fisher being fired? like the football coach um you know i never like i I don't like to ever hear anybody getting fired i really don't like to hear about that um but growing up in in texas you know i'm I'm football 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 is you know it's god then football then family and so um i get it and growing up with the aggies and i mean their season and you can't always just blame the coach but sometimes that's where it falls um, but right. we're really excited about the guy that's coming on. And, you know, sure. so I think it's good, but I don't know. I was, I didn't, I wasn't at the game. My son, I was, they all go to my son and everybody goes to the home games. They came home and they said, yeah, this happened. And we fired the coach today. And I was like, oh gosh. So, I mean, I don't know. I understand. Sometimes you have to remember that it's a business, even though it's a school and, right. you know, a team is a team, even when it's pro and when it, that's what happens to coaches. I'm sure he wasn't surprised. You see it coming, you have a season like that and, you make certain calls and you're coaching and whether it's your decisions or not, you know, there's a team of coaches, not just the head coach, but sure, I don't sure. know. I'm always mixed. Um, I think it's probably going to be a, a good move and need to shake things up. And, and this, you know, this person coming back to a and I mean, he has a, a tight A&M anyway. So I, I, I think it's going to be okay. We're going to be okay. We'll see what happens, but I I'm sure he'll, he'll be okay wherever he lands. And um, I just never like, it's always uncomfortable for me to hear someone getting fired. So. But, you and me both, uh, uh, no question about that. Uh, what I do you did think? think it was, well, I thought it was kind of odd that a lot of money, they was willing to pay a lot of money for his buyout. That's when I thought I was like, wow, uh, yeah. they, they're really trying to make a splash and make a move, and they really think that this is not working, right? And, you know, Jimbo came over there uh, from Florida State winning a national championship, right? So yeah. they were trying to – and he wanted to make a splash in the SEC, knowing that mm-hmm. that's the bigger type conference of the Power Five. Um, in the first couple of years was great. Last year they beat Bama, which yeah. uh, which was good. So, but you just know that maybe it was some factors in there that obviously we're not privy to, right? Yeah. Inside the program, and I think if anybody's trying to buy you out of seventy plus million dollars, something's not right. Something something's wrong, and the relationship has went sour. So I do agree with you. They definitely need a new shakeup. Uh, of teams I'm a huge obviously I cover sports so I'm a yeah. huge sports guy so I yeah. love that so I definitely got to throw some sports questions in here for you for sure <laughs> I love it I love it yeah yes, I feel the same yeah. way yeah we talked about the money too in our family it's like uh, you know everybody says well that's the thing to do sign a big contract and if you mess up you mess up just take the money and go sure. uh, but you know money's not everything especially when you're in sports Normally, I mean, you're not in it. I mean, money has a lot to do with it now. It's a lot different than it was a long time ago. Um, even though it was for money then too, even though we had never dreamed people would be making this much money in sports back in the day. But 
you got to really love sports to be in it, as you know, whether you're, you know, in any part of it. So, um, yeah, he got, he's walked away with a whole lot of money, but still, you know, you gotta, like you said, there's, there's a lot we don't know that's going on with a deal like that when someone buys you out and you just go and you don't know Absolutely. and they're just gone because it wasn't awful. There wasn't anything stood out that was just really terrible. So it just didn't yeah. have a great season. Just right. didn't have a great season. Right. And, uh, but you that know, happens. that happens. <laughs> that happens. Sure, yeah. Sure. So I don't know. I'm with you. I think we're on the same page. I don't know, but it's too bad, but he's, he's okay. He's going to be all right. So <laughs> he, he's definitely not hurting. Yeah. That's for not sure. hurting, not hurting, um, but yeah. This leads into the uh, favorite things, and this is the portion of the podcast where I like to ask favorite questions, and you just tell me what some of your favorite things are. Okay. Okay. So, favorite meal you like to cook? Favorite meal I like to cook? Well, I'm known for my grilled cheese sandwiches here. In fact, at on Thanksgiving, that's what we have. The kids go bounce around to all the families that they have to go see, and all the grandkids and all the cousins and everything. And then they come to my house at the end of the day, Thanksgiving, we have pajamas and mamas. And they put on their pajamas, we play Christmas movies, and I make my grilled cheese sandwiches because they've had traditional turkey and everything all day. So, yeah, so I'm known for that. That's my favorite meal to cook because my son loves my grilled cheese sandwiches. And we all just kind of, they're like ooey, gooey, yummy, crunchy, yummy sandwiches. So I like that. That's very yeah. simple, very to the uh-huh. point. And, and the pajamas and mamas is also pretty good, too. I like that. That's yeah. pretty awesome. Okay. Pretty okay. So favorite movie of yours? Gosh, so many. Um, right now, because it's Christmas, I love, um, I like love, actually. Um, wow. With Hugh Grant. I love that. So you're a rom-com person. You like rom-coms. Sometimes. I really normally I'm an action guy guy kind of like action guy movies. I don't like a lot of violence and stuff, but I like action movies. Like I'll watch Die Hard for my Christmas movie. Um I like um I'm not very much into war movies. Um I like I watched Private Ryan and all the big good real well-made war movies came out. Uh, Full Metal Jacket uh, back in the day, all these kind of cool stuff. But I oh, like yeah. I like action movies. I like mm-hmm. I love all Tom Cruise movies. Um, because can't go wrong with him. Can't, can't go, go wrong, wrong with that. No, and so because it fascinates me that he does all of his own stunts and the the amazing, you know, being an actor and having that background, I kind of study movies more than get into them. So I'm always thinking about the technical thing and how they dreamt that up. So, um, so yeah, I like that. I like. I like action. I don't like a lot of blood and guts and just shooting stuff, but um, I'm with you there, Terry. Yeah. I'm definitely with you there. No blood and guts for me. Uh, no. I would probably say the greatest showman for me. I'm a huge Ooh. musical buff. Yes. Uh, so I do love musicals quite a bit. Me if too. I wasn't doing sports, I probably would pursue something in the, the actor type of realm oh. with you because I love musicals. I love acting. I just love yeah. playing a different character other than myself. I mean, that's just, that's it. That's an amazing thing. It's intriguing. Yeah. So I love that. Okay. Yeah. Um, favorite place you ever traveled to? Uh, Croatia. Wow. What was yeah. that? What was that like? Oh, it was amazing. It was a little fishing village called Viganj. And we stayed in a house that um, there was a, a group of us who went. And we stayed in, and there's two different, two places, Croatia and also Papua New Guinea is another one of my favorite places I went. I went there and I lived there for two weeks and built a school um, in the jungle. Uh, for kids so Papua New Guinea is also my favorite yeah I love that and but um Croatia is the one place like as soon as I came home I wanted to go back again you know every time I come home I want to try a new place but that was just an amazing little fishing village a Mediterranean fishing village where you know olives were growing on the side of the road you could smell them like flowers and um pizza and um cold beer to the the north and the south fought with which was the best beer and they would say, so what kind of beer would you like? This is the best. It's like, well, have one of those. We don't sell that here. And so it was really funny. And they would, you know, so it was like the fun battle. And uh, so, yeah, but it was absolutely gorgeous. Um, yeah. So, yeah, that was right on the agency there. It was, it was beautiful. And I'd love to go back there. That is definitely a first here on my podcast. So that's <laughs> yeah. I've never heard Croatia before, but that's pretty cool. I like that. that that's the whole point. I love it. Um, yeah. Favorite concert you've ever attended? Ooh, ever attended was, well, Garth Brooks was amazing just because he's an amazing performer, loves it. You can tell every minute of it. And, Mm -hmm. but also I went to see years and years and years ago, I went to see uh, Aerosmith, a big Steven Tyler fan. And I didn't even know, but Kiss was opening for them. So I got to see Kiss 
and Aerosmith at the same wow. night, and it blew me away. You know, seeing Kiss, you know, uh, you know, just these four guys painted up, and they just go up and down, very simple stage, but they're going up and down these elevator things and singing their songs and their ballads, and um, that was a really fun one. But I have to say, Garth Brooks, um, just watching his love for what he does and his phenomenal, his phenomenal performances was that was really amazing. So. Yeah, that's yeah. amazing. That is. I would yeah. say Justin Timberlake for me. Oh, uh, yeah, Justin yeah. Timberlake, he put on a pretty good show. Um, I've heard that. No question. He put on mm -hmm. a great show. That was a great show. Um, I would say probably a show that surprised me, though, was Luke Bryan. Luke Bryan. Mm -hmm. they, so when I was in Atlanta, before I transplanted up here to Minnesota, that's where I'm at now. Oh, I, I lived in Atlanta and I graduated college uh, years ago um, at Kennesaw State. And we went to UGA and Luke Bryan, Jason Aldean, Brantley Gilbert, and I, I forgot the fourth artist, but they were doing like, it was Luke Bryan's tour, but it was all four of them together. And they were at Sanford Stadium where UGA plays football. Wow. And it was like 95,000 people there. Uh, and I, I was there doing a show. I was doing security for that show. And it was crazy. It was like, but that was a really good concert. And the ladies just went crazy for Luke Bryan. I didn't oh, understand yeah. it before, but uh, yeah. Well, I mean, when I saw him, I was like, okay, I, I, I get it. All right, yeah. all right. I understand why the ladies <laughs> go crazy now. So yeah, he, yeah. he had a song at that time called the uh, uh, the Shake It For Me Girl. I, I forgot the title of the song. Uh, yeah, but, oh, that's a good one. Yeah. Right, right. So, yeah, definitely that concert was a little different, but it was cool. It was cool. Yeah. So, I like oh, that. Oh, good mm -hmm. to know, having all those guys on one show. I mean, nowadays, you know, it's so fun to see shows because you don't know who's going to walk out. They're all friends. They all yeah. show up. Um, you, you usually get um, pretty good stuff. I think everybody got so excited to be back on the stage after COVID. It was so sure. scary to not be on the stage. And when you're a performer like that and you can't get on the stage, your world changes. So now sure. it's like I think everybody is so giving to each other's shows and will show up anywhere and it's kind of, it's kind of nice, kind of nice. It you is. Know, uh, Air Church was get. Air Church was another one too. Oh, uh, yeah. He brings alcohol on the stage and Does drinks he? it during the show. So uh, he's definitely different, no question <laughs> about that. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, my last of the favorite before we get into the next question is favorite sport you like to watch. Favorite sport I like to watch live is probably basketball. Oh my I love, goodness! I love to be at a basketball. We are about yeah. to be best friends, Terry. Yeah, really <laughs> right. I mean, nothing like it. Oh, I lived in Denver for a long time, and the company I worked for, we had company seats, and so I would get them every chance I got. Um, and so, yeah, I love that. Um, but also on a lazy summer day, I love going to a baseball game and sitting up in the cheap seats, having, you know, hot dog and a cold beer and laying back in the sun, watching some baseball. Cause baseball, you know, it's just, it's just fun environment being there, you know, on a summer day. But if I want to really go watch some sports, I love being at a basketball game. I love it. Uh, I'm with you there. Uh, like I said, we're going to be best friends. <laughs> basketball is one of my, fa it's my favorite sport. Not one of uh, football will be next baseball Me third, too. but yeah. I really, I, I, I'm from, uh, I was born in Chicago, raised in San Diego slash Atlanta, wow. uh, both places. So yeah, definitely, right? So my uh -huh. dad and my mother, are they're raised and born in Chicago. So I'm a Cubs fan because, you know, my mom's a Cubs fan. And then I'm a Padres fan because that's the team that I was raised on. But I'm yeah. also a Braves fan because that's the team I was raised on. <laughs> And now I'm here in Minnesota, so now I've converted over to being a Twins fan. So <laughs> there you have it for baseball wise. Yeah, you know, I mean? you know so, I'll roll with that because I I don't you know I, I we're going you know in Texas it's like die hard you just never ever give up your team you pick it you stick with it and it's like no I kind of like you know I have to have a reason I'm just because I'm there temporarily but I was I came alive when I left my mom raised me on the Central Division here in Dallas Cowboy Country she did not like the Cowboys so it was Green Bay Packers Minnesota. I mean, we had the Vikings all spread out everywhere. She would write Bud Grant every Monday and tell him what he did wrong over the weekend. Uh, hey. And so he sent her an autographed picture of himself and the team. Thank you, wow. Miss Betty, for sending us the letters. Um, very, my mom knew more about football and sports in general than any guy I've ever met in my life. So she, she yeah, it was really interesting to hear her talk about it. But yeah, but I was in, came alive in Colorado with, you know, Denver Rockies and the Nuggets. Mm -hmm. um you know of course the broncos i worked really closely with the broncos with the company i worked with so i was at you know at their headquarters every year and, and training with them and so 
Um, that was in the John Elway days. And um, it was really, um, it was just, yeah, I loved it. I love being around sports. It just feels good. And we brought a lot of kids into it. And I really believe strongly in the team feeling of you sure. know, being kind of sports, you know, football's a little scary, as you know, of course, with the middle school and junior highs, and you got to watch those hits and everything, but any kind of sports analogy, any kind of team thing you can do. And the Broncos were really good. We had a scholarship program that I did with the, with the Broncos and we would award the kids at halftime on the field there at mile high stadium in the middle of Denver. And so, yeah, it was very cool. But um, I just think being around sports in general, it just feels good and it can give a really good does. message and careful who your heroes are, but you know, that's just who it is. That's how it is in life. You know, you just, um, right. you know, take it all, take it all in, but oof, there's just nothing about being at a game, no matter what. I'm with you on that. Totally with you on that. Yeah. Now you've had, now we've talked about it. You've had, uh, like you said, actor, writer. You also was a radio personality as well. Uh, talk show host, news anchor. Tell me about, uh, or tell me the role that has had the most impact on your career and why. I think being a news anchor, this this recently thing, because it's something I never thought I could do. I grew up watching it. And of course, I was always pretending, you know, with the hairbrush in the mirror and always interviewing people. And I was always fascinated with the sports people. I mean, with the, what sports do, uh, but news people being on the desk. I just thought that was just, you know, I used to practice saying, I'm Terry Simmons, Channel 3 News. And uh, back to you. I like to say back to you in the studio. <laughs> um, right, but I knew right. that, you know, it's just so much fun. The first time I really got to say that, it, it, I was right. like, and um, so I, this has been the most impactful. I think I love doing the news. I never knew that I would. And I'm not a risk reporter. I'm a journalist. I'm kind of a guerrilla journalist. I kind of do it on the side. But uh, and I've always been a writer. But um, true reporting and going out, getting the story and editing the stories. I was lucky where they had me on the news desk all the time. So live interviews, I would bring my content in as live interviews. Um, and I would go do live shots, but as far as going out reporting and putting the packages together, I didn't have, I didn't get to do a lot of that, but right. I just felt like, especially this, this timing being on the news, I felt like it was my service. Cause I think there are several different people, types of people who watch the news. Now there's some who have quit. They don't want to watch the news. They don't want to know it's too much. And there's right. some who watch it because they are diehard. They believe what they're watching. They have their channel. They watch and they watch it and they live by it. And then they talk about it. And then you got that middle of the road people, which I thought were my viewers, where they want to just be in the know. They don't want to put their head in the sand. Um, so they watch it, but they kind of just in the background. I thought those were my people. So I tried to report the news. I, in Shreveport, Louisiana, we have a lot of crime. So every newscast is about how many killings, where was the latest shooting. There's a shooting on every report. And it's right wow. around the corner from where we are. And um, it's it's constant. And so to me... It was really impactful because it's my platform. As I said, TV and film just is my platform. But um, to get to deliver the news with as much compassion as I could for the doers and the people being done on too. Every day I would just get up and I'm a big meditator. I teach meditation. I'm fairly big into, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, okay. Yeah. So I get out ahead of it every morning and I just get in there and, you know, it's prayer and meditation. And I just get on the desk and say, thank you before I do it. And I just have compassion for both sides of what I'm talking about. So I, I hope that I'm coming into someone's living room or their bedroom or their, their phone or their, you know, car, wherever they're listening, watching to the news. If I'm delivering it, I just want to do it with compassion. Like we're in it together. Don't let it bring you down. Here's what's happening. Listen to it or not, but you know, it's try to find the good in everything. So. I think that's sure. pretty I love that. I, I love that. And which is one of the reasons why I love talking to people on this platform because you got to be passionate about journalism. You have to be passionate about storytelling. Um, and you have to have those kind of faces in front of the TV to tell the news. Some like you said, shootings happen. It's sometimes the root the news, sorry, is very rough uh to tell. Uh, which is a great segue. I didn't really even have this question, but it just came up in my mind. Um, how often uh, do you take the news home with you? When you're doing hard news, you know, there's soft news and there's hard news. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's impossible to never say you take it home because sometimes you probably actually do. But how do you deal with that? How do you deal with having to do hard news and then try to separate yourself from it? I, I was really, really good at leaving it where it was. As soon as I said, good night, you know, we'll see you next time. Um, thanks for joining us. I was done. I didn't carry it with me. I didn't carry the feeling of it because going into it, I made sure that I was feeling good about what I was doing, not what I was saying. 
And sure. um, while I'm in it, yeah, you know, it's tough. And if I'm reporting a story about, you know, a child getting hurt and a lot of politics, you know, got very ugly and can get very ugly. Um, I really made it a, a, you know, really concerted effort to just, um, it's what I do. It's what I read. They're just words. You know, I feel it while I'm doing it. And of course I think about who it's impacting. Um, sure. And sure. then I, I just have a way of just, um, I really, really worked hard on not ever bringing it home with me or letting it get to me because I knew if I did, I couldn't do the job. So, yeah. Now, would that be, so let, let me ask this because, you know, incoming people, right? And I've talked to all different kinds, people that are veteran in this game, but people that's also graduates that's coming into their first job or people that uh, have, um, um, you know, transitioned from a different kind of career. Uh, is it easier now? that, you know, obviously we, we got maturity on your side. You've been in it for a while. You've been around it. Um, what advice would you give somebody that's doing hard news that, you know, is so compassionate because you really have to kind of build up, um, mm -hmm. you know, kind of you have to build up a tolerance of being able to deal with this and still be professional but not take it home with you. What advice would yeah. you give somebody that's incoming? I think there's a way to practice being detached and being an observer and mm -hmm. I always feel like my philosophy is when I'm on the desk, I disappear. So it's not about me, even though it's television. Um, it's not about me. The story is the star. The story is. So I try to put myself in, in the viewer's place, too. I'm just an observer. I'm, I'm, I, I wasn't there. Or maybe if I was reporting after the fact or whether I was there, just mm -hmm. try to be detached. Be the observer and be the storyteller and talk about it and make it a service. But don't feel it. Don't feel it. Feel for the people. You're not going to be able to not have compassion in this business. It's why you do it because you care about what you're talking about. You care right. about the people you're reaching out to. But you can still do that with a kind of a discernment. Um, and plus, you practice discernment instead of judging and stay curious. Be curious. Tell the story. The story is the star. So just tell a story. Let it unfold in front of you and then leave it there. Give it to the viewer and let the viewer enjoy it or be affected by it uh, and then just leave it there. That's what it is. It's a story. It's not part of you. And so you can still be compassionate and you can care about what you're talking about, but mm -hmm. don't be part of the story. Just, you're, not, you're not part of the story. You're this lovely gift that you're giving people, even if it's bad news, make it just a story that you're telling them and find, find, find why you're saying it. You're not saying it because you want to, I'm not going to tell you, Chris, this horrible story because I want to see you in pain. I want to see you scared. I'm telling sure. you because there's information in it. So, so do that. Talk about, keep thinking about why we tell these stories. It's just information. And, uh, and then just have in your mind that, you know, compassion for the doers and the doing unto and, and, and just leave it there. I love that. And I really do. It's a great response. And it's also a great segue. I, I want to talk about mental health. Uh, being in this business, mental health uh, really affects a lot of reporters, whether it's print or broadcast in a variety of ways. Mm -hmm. uh, we've seen it with our we've seen the term burnout a lot get used up. Right. Because the two words that are kind of synonymous with this industry is uh, overworked and underpaid. And yes. those two words seem to be used a lot, especially with people that's coming into it. Uh, are we millionaires from doing this? No. <laughs> and yes, we probably all feel at some point we should be getting paid more money to do that. No question about that. But the burnout is real because sometimes you have burnout from different stations. Sometimes bosses are not very good. Sometimes it's different things with coworkers. Uh, sometimes it's just with yourself. You think that this is something that you want to do and you don't know how to get out of a situation to be able to improve it. How do you deal with mental health uh, and, and what is some things that you do to kind of relieve that? That is a great question. And you summed it up perfectly because a lot of people, if you're not in the business, it can look really glamorous. It can look like you're joking around with your co-anchor. They must be really good buddies. And if it's a guy and a girl, gosh, they kind of have a connection. I wonder if they're, you know, together off screen. There's all kinds of things that we want to portray with the, while we're watching and the viewers can. And it, the truth is it's really, it's really hard work. You, you hope that you can build trust with the person you're standing beside. And even sure. if you're even if you're an anchor by yourself, you have someone in your ear. You have a relationship with the directors and the producers who are in your ear in another room, probably upstairs in the dark, flipping all the switches. So there's right. a lot of relationships going on. And I think the biggest thing I would tell anybody is stay grounded in yourself and go within. Don't depend on 
getting validation from anybody else because if you really hang your validation on someone else, even when they leave for lunch, there goes your worth with them because it's hanging on them and you're sitting there needing mm -hmm. that validation and they're not here anymore. Same thing with a, you know, relationship, you know, if you're married or you're dating or you're seeing someone you put your self-worth, like you're, you know, the two of you are one and you put your validation on does he or she love me? Uh, when, when they go away, they take that with them and you're left with nothing. And that's what happens a lot of times to people. They put their sure. worth on the person. So they're going to take it with them. I would say just really, take some time every day to go within and find and having a higher power is the biggest thing in the world to me. My faith is really, really, really strong and you can call it whatever you want. It doesn't have to be a certain religion, but have some kind, know that you belong to some, something bigger than yourself is watching after you. And that's the relationship you have with that higher being and that person within go within love yourself, feel worthy about yourself um, stand at that desk for a little bit longer or stand out in the field or get that camera going, get that mic going out in the weather, whatever you're sent out to do, get grounded. It only takes a few seconds and go within. There's your validation. Carry that with you so that it doesn't matter what's coming from the outside. And plus, when you've got that, you're only going to attract what's good from other people. If you already got it going on inside and you're shining your own light and this is all you really need, then it's only going to energetically bounce off everybody else. And that's what you're going to bring out of everybody else. So it's really not going to matter. So go within, just take care of yourself. I love that. I do. Uh, and I like asking that question to a lot of different people uh, of different occupations of how they dealt with it. Some people like to work out. Some people like to go on walks. Some people like to um, call people, right? Call your family, call friends, talk it out. Some people really need to talk it out when they're having rough times. Um, you know, because the mental health thing is definitely real and it's yeah. been more prevalent now ever since the COVID situation has happened because mm -hmm. people were sitting at home and were stuck at home and not being able to. And then when you get out and then you go about to these different jobs and you have these station managers or these hierarchies that are not treating you the way that you should be treated, which is in a lot of different places, right? Yep. So yeah. you don't know, you don't know how to balance the line of okay. I got to say something, but you don't want to be to the point where it's disrespectful. And for me personally, I don't have a problem with that. And the reason why I say that, and I say that kind of, <laughs> I humbly say that I really do. <laughs> yeah. But I, I say it. that because I'm the type of person that's very direct. Um, if you don't notice that's that's how I hit you up. I hit you up like very it. direct. I right. Like so yeah. There, there is really is no BS. There's no mm -hmm. bull sugar, honey, iced tea going on here. Uh, it's just me and that's how it's going to be if I feel like it's wrong we'll talk it out if uh, if I feel like I've done something wrong talk it out with me but some people are just afraid to do that and it really does affect their mental health so it's a question yeah. worth asking but it's also a great answer by you for people that you know will eventually see this episode that hey you know this is how she deals with it or this is how they deal with it is that you can rely on validation, validate yourself. Don't put too much on another person. Like you just said, yeah. you have to, your self-worth matters. Yeah. Um, so without yeah. question. Yeah. But, and I do like that you brought up the different things you can do, like exercising and because I'm a huge nature lover. So physically something you can do. Yes. Go, there's something to you know, go outside and play that you, you saw here all the time or go outside, go for a walk around the building, go outside in nature. If you can't shake it, if you can't go within, you didn't get out ahead of it. Cause we all have those days where I can't let it go. It's really, it's getting to me today. I didn't get right. out ahead of it. They got me. I'm believing what they're saying or whatever's going on. I just went through that at work. It was a huge thing. In fact, I'm not at the station anymore because of it. It happened. It was a big thing, but okay. um, not only because of that, but it kind of brought a lot of stuff to height, but it kind of told me I need to be somewhere else. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, go outside and breathe some air, touch a tree. If you can go barefoot, let your feet touch the ground. I'm a huge, huge, huge believer in the earth. You know, just go outside, go outside for a walk, breathe the air. You, you can't help but feel better when you come in, walk around the building, go outside, do something. And if there's a plant, if you can't get outside, find a plant and put the plant's leaves between your hand. Um, get grounded. Get grounded. <laughs> okay. Uh, I yeah. like that. Yeah. I so like do that. that. Yeah. Do that. That's just find. Cool. Yeah, find some earth. But I'm glad you brought that up because just go take a walk. Take a walk or take a nap if you sure. can't shake it. Because when we sure. rest, that's when our, our you know brain kind of works it all out anyway. So absolutely, absolutely yeah. agreed on that. Um this is the portion where I like to do this or that. 
So basically what this is, is I throw some things out at you and you choose one or the other. Okay. okay. Are you yeah. re are you ready, Terry? I'm ready. I'm ready. Let's do it. All right, let's do it. Popeyes or KFC? Oh, Popeyes. I'm about to say, Terry, you in Louisiana now. I know. I can't <laughs> help it. I got to. Popeyes. Yeah. <laughs> right. Here we go. <laughs> Chicken wing flavors. Okay. Uh, barbecue or lemon pepper? Barbecue. Okay. Do you like uh, bone-in or boneless wings? Boneless. Okay. Yeah, we definitely going to be great friends. I love it. I'm a bone. I'm a boneless person, too, yeah. Terry. Right? <laughs> Here we go. Fort okay. wide. Basketball or football? Do what now? What was the question? What Basketball or football? Of what? Courtside, you said? Uh, No. Oh, oh, which just, one would you rather watch? Which, oh, which one would I rather watch? Um, If it's live basketball. But in the fall, I love to have TV on, football on TV, playing all the time. As soon as TV, football starts, I play it. It makes me feel good. But, yeah, no, live basketball all the way. Okay. Same question, two different sports. Baseball or hockey? Ooh, hockey. Oh. The first okay. time I saw a hockey game, it was an exhibition game between the Ducks and the Sharks in Denver when they first came there and when they first started, the Avalanche first started. And I was sitting behind the glass. So even though I said, you know, I don't like blood and guts and everything, but the guy got hurt and he came over and he's great. And then they, they jerked down his pants. He was bleeding, yeah. cutting down his pants. I was just like oh. right there, you know, and he was sliced on them. They just taped it together, pulled it back up and he went back out and played hockey. And I was just like, I love this game. So I yeah, love, I I love, love hockey. Yeah. I like watching hockey. Hockey's interesting to me and I don't fully understand it yet. As far mm -hmm. as all the, you know, all the terminology and everything. Of course, I know, you know what you do. But all the other stuff and the, you know, the the hat trick and the, the other, anyway, all the, all the terms and everything. So, you know, but I, I love watching it. I don't have to understand a sport fully to, to enjoy it. If I that tells that. you something, I felt kind of very, I don't know, girly saying that, but I mean, um, I want to, and I love it and I will, and I'll ask all the questions and I like to learn all the players and I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm into it, but I don't have to know what's going on completely to enjoy it. Right, you know, and sometimes being in the unknown is a beautiful thing. Uh, yes. You know, it's Isn't it? It's, it's, Thank it's, it's you. A, being in the unknown is a beautiful thing. Sometimes. Yes, I love being yeah. very childlike and in awe. I'm very childlike when it comes to enjoying life and being in awe. I can just really enjoy it. I mean, I know what offsides means. I know what, where the puck needs to be to get in, what what happens, and I know sure, that that's sure. what you're doing. I understand that kind of stuff, but I also just love being in awe and learning something new, like oh, whoop. What happened? What 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 was that card for? Right. Was, you know, yes, I I love that you said that. Yeah, sometimes yeah. not knowing is just blissful. I'm like a wide open child every day. There's something new to learn. So, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Um, let me ask this: Which concert would you rather go watch, George Strait or Garth Brooks? Garth Brooks. Garth Brooks. Okay. Yeah. Which concert would you rather go watch, Christina Aguilera or Britney Spears? Christina. In Aguilera. Yeah. Okay. I like yeah. that. I yeah. like that. So which sport would you rather play? Oh. Bowling or badminton? Ooh. <laughs> Depends on the day, but badminton. I like being outside. Okay, I like that. That's yeah. awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. You are one of few that has said that. Really? <laughs> For sure. Yeah, yeah, it hasn't been a lot. It has not been a lot of people, but I, I love badminton. I do. I do too. I really do. Okay, okay. Two more on the, on the this or that. Tom Brady or Peyton Manning? Oh, gosh. Peyton Manning. Okay, I, I like it. I love him. I like yeah. It. I like that. That is very decisive, by the way, Terry. I really yes. like that. Yes. pretty awesome i love him yeah okay this is the last one all right the last one for this or that and this goes to basketball okay who's the, who's the goat mj or lebron okay. who's your goat mj mj yeah. okay but i love lebron i love everything about lebron I such know. a good guy such a you know a hero i think you know mm -hmm. Such a good example. I love them both, but I guess old school, you know. <laughs> oh, MJ, I, I yeah. I grew, I, I grew up watching MJ too. No yeah, question. Yeah, just classic. But LeBron, hard to beat right now, you know. And I'm like, God, what an athlete. Yeah, he's amazing. You know, is, yeah. Um, you know, and I gotta say, I'm a huge Kobe Bryant fan. I'm still a still a Kobe Bryant. 
Now nah, that was definitely my guy that I grew up on a yeah. lot. Yeah. Uh, because I was being in California. But yeah. Uh, but yes, Me Michael too. Jordan. I, yeah. Mm, yeah. Yeah. No yeah. Michael Jordan. Okay. Good. I like that. Questions. I love this conversation. Great questions. Yeah, this that's definitely you definitely did an excellent job on this or that. There's a lot of people <laughs> that get like stumped and they just don't know what to say. And, you know, <laughs> I try to mix it up a lot because there's some people that I have on here that's sports. Some people that have on here that's news. Some people that's entertainment reporters. Yeah. There's some people that work with teams. They're not yeah. even in the journalism field. They're just in sports or there's uh, in another profession, right? Yeah. So I'm going to try to mix it up depending on the guests that I have. And you've been absolutely wonderful to talk to. There's no question about that. And Thank I have you. a couple couple more questions for you. Okay. This next question has to do with upcoming projects that you have. What is something uh, that you're working on right now that you could talk about um, that's good, that we could look out for in the future? Well, um, I have a, a podcast called Jewels from the Jeep, where I just put some inspirational feelings. I don't, uh, or I'm saying just a few little quips. You know, I try to make it short and sweet, something that's on my mind. Um, and it comes from being on the road and, and leaving these videos from the side of the road and getting back in that because it was all about the Jeep. People know me as Go Terry Go and being in the Jeep. So I try to keep that going. It's fall, it's fallen off a little bit, but now I want to get more regular on that. And I've been trying to write a book forever so now i'm really trying to really buckle down and just get this book out of me even if it's just crappy i just need to write it i got to get it going i got to get it done so i'm really trying to to write this write my story so now i remember you talking about the jeep and you you do you still have that same jeep that you still slept in or, I, or, or? no i'm breaking in a new one um I had, I, yeah okay. i had two hundred eighty five thousand miles on that other one that i put oh, on wow. there in a matter of probably really good solid three or four years so i was on the road 16 to 18 hours a day by myself driving around for years and sure. uh, so two hundred eighty five thousand. But it was still good. That Jeep rode like a Cadillac. That thing was just wonderful. But uh, I love uh, it. I yeah. Love it. But I thought it was time. So no, I have a different Jeep now. But I hope I always drive a Jeep, a two door Jeep, as 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 rugged as I can get. Just a Jeep. So I love that. I love yeah. it. Now, what what would be the title of your book? Um, actually, right now the working title is "Moms on the Roof." <laughs> Okay. Yeah. And that comes from a joke, a story that my sister and I had um, that I, it's an unknown writer. I don't know, but it was kind of when my mom was um, sick and being treated, she was in yeah. hospice care at home. I was the main caregiver. My sister was in Houston. And so that was kind of our, my sister wanted to stay kind of distanced from it. And we agreed when it happened, each of us do it our own way with no judgment. You do whatever you got to do. I'll do what I've got to do. And we worked really well together. But the, the kind of joke was, there was a joke that talks about that. And um, so I think that's the title and I'll explain it in the book. But it's finding the humor. Humor has been in my toolbox ever since I was seven years old. I was bullied as a kid. And, you know, I was the, the fat and ugly kid in school. Everybody made fun of. And I use that term because that's what they called me. And it was just like, you know, but I found humor. Humor and humor has gotten me through absolutely everything in my life. So. Sure. That's kind well, of... I can honestly tell you, you are no longer fat and ugly. That's <laughs> not it. <laughs> well, thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> You're very welcome. I don't know what rude kids was back there when you was growing up, but God bless their heart for saying those things to you. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, it's okay. Thank goodness we didn't have the internet back then. So, um, yeah, it just it just stayed at school. It was like, oh my gosh, seriously. But you know, I wasn't mad at everybody. It's, it's kind of like the the theme of the book and what I talk to kids about. I work with suicide prevention and some things with a company in Colorado and I always talk about you know for me I didn't think they were being mean to me I, it was almost worse because I thought they were just stating fact I thought they were just telling it like it was that I was right. that was my role to be the heavy not so attractive girl um okay. but I had lots of all my friends were pretty and I hung around with all my pretty friends I thought it was they were it was okay that that was my role to not be the pretty one and I was okay right. with that and I don't know that that's really that's kind of sad looking back now um it was it was it's comforting in the way that, yeah because I wasn't yeah. sad about it it was just like huh, you know that's me right. Um, right but yeah so yeah it was interesting growing up like that but humor so anyway that's I think that's why the thread in my book will be the the humor that I have always used to go get through tough times just find the funny sure yeah. absolutely yeah. Uh, you got to smile rather than cry right so yeah. I totally understand that um yeah. I'm I'm a huge reader of books I like autobiographies I like 
uh, different books to read. So, of course, whenever that does come out, Terry, we you definitely got to let me know. So I, I can will. Go copy for sure. <laughs> I will for sure. I will. Thank yeah. you. Thanks for your support. No, no question. No question about it. Now, I got to ask you this. It's the last question. What is two people? And you got to help me get them on here. What is two people that come to mind? Uh, they can be male or female that you would recommend to come on this podcast and talk to. Oh, well, definitely. We talked about Alex Anderson, the yeah. sports director at KTBS okay. Channel 3. So um, I think okay. He's really good. And you'll, you'll, he's fascinating. And like he's, you know, he's an anchor in sports and he comes from hot in Louisiana, a small town here. And um, I think you would you would have a fantastic conversation with him. So mm -hmm. definitely Alex Anderson. Uh, let me see. Let me give you another one. The really good one. Um, absolutely. Absolutely. I, I look forward to talking yeah. to him for sure. Yeah. You'll love him. You'll love him. And of course, we'll have so much, you know, the sports you guys will just be like, because he's oh, yeah. we'll amazing. Be talking. Oh, yeah. We'll be yeah. Talking. You will. But but he's well rounded like you are. The questions you'll ask, you'll find his questions, his answers to your questions will be just absolutely fascinating, okay. too. Okay. So, Is there another woman that's wonderful like yourself? Another that you woman. Would well, thank you. Uh, you know what? Um, I hate to give you another sports, another person, news person, but her name is Brittany Breeding and she's new at, at KTBS channel three. And she's amazing. She has come in here and done some outstanding investigative work. In fact, she is, she's been working on some cold cases here. And the first cold case she did led to being solved. Like people called in and it was years, years and years old cold. So the people who they say did the crime are dead now. Um, but because it was such a long thing, but it led to some answers for the family and it, and it led to another case as it will. So she's doing some really interesting work with cold cases. So, like uh, and like she just that. went on, and she just went on a military ship out in the sea, um, and did some talked about, you know, the guys out there. So she has, and when the circus came to town for the first time, a couple of months ago, she went out to where they were training and got to train with the circus. I mean, she's doing some fantastic stuff. She's a young reporter, um and she's um she's going places so um she's the real deal so she's another good one that you might want to talk to okay Brittany, Brittany and uh and Alex Brittany, Brittany. Uh -huh. yeah two Hello. wonderful wonderful people I got a bonus question for you uh okay. and this bonus question is about Louisiana now okay. uh, the reason why I wanted to ask this question is because my stepmother uh is planning a trip out there uh in May the reason uh -huh. being is her birthday uh, and she wants to do something. She wants to liven it up a little bit. I've never been to Louisiana, so I need to know <laughs> what are some things about Louisiana that I should know. And it's crazy to say that because I lived in Atlanta for years before I, I moved to Minnesota, but I've never been to Louisiana. What what should I know about Louisiana? Well, first of all, the food is amazing. You cannot get bad food. I mean, the good Southern cooking, you know, we fry and we refry, but um, the Cajun <laughs> spices, the flair, uh, but there's health, healthy stuff too. But um, everywhere you go, um, the food, you can't go wrong. Find the smaller, like anywhere you go. I'm a dive girl. I'll go to little, I want to go where the natives go whenever I travel around and go to places. Um, definitely the food. Um if it's if you're in the Shreveport area, if you're in Northwest Louisiana, there's a beautiful little town called um, Natchitoches, and it's kind of spelled Natchitoches, kind of like Nacogdoches, where I went to SFA is strange. Oh, uh, okay, yeah. gotcha. so it's, It looks like Natchitoches, but it's Natchitoches, and it's got you can go kayaking. The water goes like right through town. Um, if it's um, when is she coming? Are you coming in the summer, the spring? Yeah, in May. Yeah, in yeah. May. and that's good because it won't be too hot yet. It might be hot, so be hot and sweaty. It gets, you know, really humid here. But it should May is May should be pretty pleasant. But okay. um and there's just that's what it is, mostly just yeah. And there's a lot of art here. There's uh concerts. Sometimes we have a convention center, but we have amphitheaters. Now you talk. Now you yeah. talk. Yeah. yeah, there's a lot of good music here. Good music, okay. um, lots of good food. There's um what about sports? Well, and obviously, you know, there's there's New New Orleans got the sports, but yeah. what about what about Shreveport? We have hockey. We have the Mud Bugs, um, so we got that. And um, you know, there's there's baseball close by. I mean, there's a lot of sports you can find. There's sports all around. There's okay. you know, high, you know, in the May if you can catch a high school game, the high school games are absolutely amazing. They're just like going to and the the feel of going to these games is incredible. I so, definitely know about yeah. that. I cover definitely, high school. Yeah. yeah. Definitely look up sports. 
Um, okay. Yeah. There's always some like sports it. going on because it's this is the South and this is football is king, but there's always something going on too. We pull in as many sports as we can. There's beautiful parks here. There's hiking. There's. Um, I like that too. Yeah. I like I like the hike. Yeah. That's for sure. Yeah. Okay. So there's lots well, to do. That is amazing, Terry. It really is. And and once again, I want to thank you for hopping on my podcast at the Work Hard, Play Hard podcast, Conversations with CD. It's been an absolute pleasure getting to know you, uh, what you do with Healthline 3, what you did with KTBS, your shorts, uh, the fact you like boneless wings, and you love Garth Brooks as one of your favorite concerts, uh, how you deal with things in the industry and mental health is also great as well. I thought this was a great conversation, as I always do with every guest that I have. The last question I ask is, is there anything else you would like to add before we conclude? I just really would like to add how much I've enjoyed this conversation. I'm really honored that you asked me to be on your show. Um, I know, and I can tell that you don't, um, it's not a random thing. You're very careful in selecting. I appreciate you did the research and found out a lot about me. Um, you made this such a delightful conversation. So I just really just like to add that. Thank you so much. This has really been an honor and I've really enjoyed it. Thank you. Well, you are very welcome. Like I've said a couple of times already, you are absolutely wonderful to talk to. It's very easy, very easy to talk to somebody who's wonderful, who's knowledgeable, and who's willing to share uh, very beneficial information, right? So I thank you so much. Please keep in touch, and you enjoy the rest of your Wednesday evening. I will. Thank you so much. We'll talk no soon. No problem. Yes, right. we will. All right. Bye-bye. <laughs>